make sure your economy grows, but you also look after the most vulnerable. And I think that is really important. And I think that's something that the Mayor has made each and every one of us as Cabinet members make sure that as well as growing the economy of this city, whatever portfolio we're in, we ensure that all of our policies actually protect the most vulnerable and give them hope and chances, whether it's in their educational achievements, their opportunities to arts and culture, or their chances for employment and skills. So I definitely oppose the motion. I think it's a churlish motion. I think it doesn't recognise what all of us together as councillors want for our citizens um, and I would ask all of the councillors to support them. the Mayor's motion and it for it to be a unanimous vote to show how we all really support local governments and are proud of each and every one that helps us achieve our goals.
For the amendment four, against 78, no abstentions, the amendments is lost. Can we move to the main motion? Why is it by Mayor Anderson? Well, they're just very, very good. We just want to say, um, I, I missed obviously uh, the amendment being introduced to the before. four. But let me just make uh, a, a fact uh, available to people. Um, and it is a fact that in terms of the 16 years that I've been a councillor uh, on this council, I have never seen a more ineffective, um, superfluous two requirements group of councillors than the so called Green Party in this city. Absolutely, absolutely a waste of space. Absolutely. I will say what I mean because uh, Councillor Bradford used the last force to be nice in terms of what I'm trying to say. Councillor Bradford knows, as I have given on many occasions in this chamber, credit to him for participating in the way with this administration to deal with the most uh, severest attack financially that this city has ever faced. And when people write about this period between 2010 to today, they will remember how this administration <laughs> has steered this city, not through just the 58% cuts, but actually forced every single day to keep services going. With other councils across the country and other cities across the country have closed short star centres, libraries and other services. We every single day fight to protect as much of those services as we possibly can. And we've done that without the means and we will continue to do that. The voting is on the main motion. All those in favour? Unanimous. Unanimous. Could I just advise the uh, members that item 13, that this item has been withdrawn and will be referred directly to the Adult Social Care and Health Select Committee. Therefore, can we move on to item 14, the national curriculum, and can I ask Errol Pollard and Janet Kerr to move motions in their name?
Shaw's felt sentiments there were in 2010. There are now less than 765, and some of those are not even operating as children's centres, they just give advice. It's criminal. The deregulation of teachers' pay, 2013, a 60-hour plus working week has meant that 50,000, and I will repeat that, 50,000 have left the profession. <coughs> and now this government wants a team of super teachers to go and source out failing schools. Where are they going to come from? And many of these teachers are maths teachers and science teachers. It's a disgrace. We also have the abolition of the education maintenance allowance, the trebling of tuition fees, and now we have record numbers of youth unemployment. It's heartbreaking. Liverpool is a vibrant and growing city with many innovative plans for the future. Many developments are planned. And what do we need for the future? We need mechanics, we need builders, electricians, and many, many more to continue this. There's the hospitality industry. <laughs> Tourism, big business here. Look at the success of the International Business Festival. Young people need vocational qualifications to develop these skills to make this city even greater. We've got, we need hotel employers, hairdressers. It's vital. There's many, many more. And it will help our economy. Today's curriculum is far too narrow. We need these vocational studies. Children and young people to be put off by too much testing. Our schools do well against the odds. 37 of them, including special schools, are now deemed to be outstanding. And we also have an effective local authority. Finland, one of the smallest countries <coughs> in the world, is consistently top or near the top in world rankings of academic achievements. They do not test any child until they are 16 years old. I enjoyed school. I was academic. My brother wasn't. He failed his 11 plus. He went to secondary school and he thrived because of all the technical and vocational subjects he was taught there. We need subjects like woodwork, mechanics, technical drawing, coding, computer skills and <coughs> anti-radicalisation education. We need a well-rounded education, a full education. We mustn't forget art, music, dance, sports. These are vital. They give children fun, they give them enjoyment. There's an obsession with learning times tables. We have a year six teacher who's fabulous. Uh, he used to teach children their tables by clicking their fingers and they used to pick the music that they could click and shut the tables to. It got a bit hairy at one point because the tune of the day was too bad.
So I'm moving on to the second amendment by Councillor Ryan. Second Okay. 
So the voting is on the amendment. For the amendment 5, against 76, the last session of the amendments is lost. Can I now go to the main motion? And I've got Councillor Rachel O'Byrne who'd like to speak, and could I ask her to be really brief near the end of our time on this particular motion? Thank you. Very, very useful. I just wanted to echo um, what uh, Councillor Rachel said so, so brilliantly. Um, I was a and the school wasn't always the best time for me. And not always the fullest time. Um, and don't get me started on maths. I still haven't quite forgiven my parents um, for trying to make fractions and times tables fun. It's never fun, and I do But I feel that I was very lucky at the time that um, I went to school um, under the government. Um, and I had teachers who had a little bit more freedom um, to encourage me to read for pleasure. I still do now and has helped me hugely. Um, my reading comprehension went up, um, my understanding on my way to, to make an argument and public speaking um, has improved um, and continues to improve as a result of it. And I, I just worry for students who do have dyslexia and dyspraxia like, like myself will not have that <coughs> opportunity. I remember the joy of being able to, to read in the classroom to be read to, um, to have that fun. Of, of, of really getting lost in a book and really having that understanding and, and I, I think that to lose that is to lose a great thing and I know that in the city we are doing such brilliant work on this led by um, Councillor Orr who is really um, taking the fun into schools of reading and working with the reader organisation working with the city leaders which is just fantastic but we need that freedom in schools and we need kids who are told or think that they're a bit thick and they're stupid because they've got dyslexia, that they're not, that they're fantastic, that they're creative, that they're imaginative, that they have all these other skills. Because to, to sit uh, to sit in an exam and I've done this before, sorry. To sit in the exam and think that you are, are beneath your classmates is just the most appalling thing. And I completely agree with Councillor Ken when she said in in here and then that. It, that's not okay, and that's what this government is pushing children into doing, to think that they are less than they are not. Every child matters, and that is something I am so proud of the Labour government to introduce. It is something that this Tory government is a family that is not acceptable. 